Let's stand together this morning and grateful for the blessings of God. Are you happy in Jesus today? God is good. Give God praise, will you? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. To be happy in God doesn't mean that everything in your world is happy. It doesn't mean everything's going good. It means I'm happy in Him regardless of the way things are going because I'm designed to give praise. I'm designed to give glory and honor and to give thanks, and that's what I'm going to do. Let's just join us together here this morning in prayer. We have a couple of special requests that's mentioned this morning. Let's ask God, ask God to move in those needs, will you? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. We give you thanks. The glory of Almighty God lives among us here today, and we are here to exalt you, here to lift you up, to give you praise. Speak, God, into our spirit. Let life become a part of our life, and let us, God, surrender ourselves totally and completely over to you. Bless special needs that are here this morning, and we will thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him praise as we sing today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Sing how great is our God.
Just give him praise. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Everybody lift your voices and begin to just express your praise and gratitude to God. Lord, regardless of what's going on in my life, you are good. You are the only stable thing. You're the only stable thing. I can trust you. I can believe in you. I can have confidence, God, that you are good regardless of what the circumstances and the situations of life are. You are good. 
And God, I just praise you this morning. I praise you, God. I praise you. I praise you for breath. I praise you, God, that my family is all alive. And God, that they are here and able to worship you. Still on the earth. Still with an opportunity. Still with a chance to give praise and glory and honor to you, Jesus. How we love you, God. How we adore you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you this morning. I need you, God. I need you. He's a strong and mighty tower oh, yes, he is. that I can run to God is my refuge I praise you God I praise you God without him what would I do oh yes when clouds of doubt hover o'er me the storms of life they toss me to and fro there is a place I can go oh yes hallelujah he's a ship through every tempest he's an anchor that is sure in times like this
would have been at a downward drain with life just falling apart but because of Christ because of Jesus we have been blessed and lifted up and picked up and the blessings of God flow into our life hallelujah you know the Bible said let the redeemed of the Lord say so I want every hand to be lifted in this building this morning if you will and I want you just to open your mouth and begin to praise God because redeemed, those that are redeemed speak that redemption. They speak that life. But I thank you. I thank you for life. I thank you for my soul and my spirit that it becomes secured in you that I'm not alone, but your abiding peace and your abiding comfort is here with me today. And I thank you, God, for all your benefits in the glorious name of Jesus. Flow, Holy Spirit, flow. Let the blessings of God to move. I hunger for you, God. I must have you. I must have Jesus. Oh, God, let the abundance of your spirit speak into our hearts here today. God, I need life. I need hope. I need security. I need to know that you are there regardless of what comes or goes. No matter how desperate times appear to be, you are there. No matter how bad, no matter how good, you are always there. Every good and perfect gift flows down from the Father above. And God, you are good, and you have come into our lives here today. And you have blessed us, and we thank you for that. We thank you, God, for the shedding of your blood, for calling upon the power of the name into our life, that we might know you, share with you, and enjoy the abundance of your glory. God, even so, speak into our spirit here today. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for your great name. Hallelujah. God, how I need you. How I need you. How I need you. Thank you, Jesus. Are you glad for the touch of God? The touch of God. Oh, yes. Oh, songwriter wrote, said he touched me. How wonderful it is to be touched by the spirit of the most high God and to have Jesus living abundantly within our spirit. God is good. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know, when you come to Jesus, it doesn't matter who you are, what your name is, what your economic standing is. It doesn't matter what your educational uh, IDs may be. All of that means nothing to God. All God sees is a soul, somebody that's willing to say yes to Jesus and follow him. Now, if you aren't willing to follow him, he isn't going to do much for you. You've got to be willing to say, God, I'm willing to follow you. I'm willing to do what you have asked me to do, to do your bidding. And I'm telling you that if you follow God, you'll never have to worry one day about a lot of the bad situations. It's, it's when you don't follow God that your life falls into havoc and, and disruption. <coughs> Amen? Yeah. Amen. I believe that. I believe that's when you don't follow God. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have problems and you're not going to have troubles. But it means that all along the way, you're going to see God in all of that. God, you are the one. You're my security. You're my hope. Everything I need, I have found it all in Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I love to worship him. Don't you? I love to worship him. That's what it's about. It's about praising and worshiping God. And how what a blessing it is this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, girls. Amen. They're going to sing for us this morning. Praise God. You can be seated.
spoke a word You were singing over me You had been so, so good to me For I took a breath You paid your life for me You have been so, so kind to me. Though the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God always chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending reckless of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no words, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God always chases me down, fights till I found leaves to 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God
All right. Give God a good praise, will you? We're going to receive our tithe and offering this morning. We want you to prepare to give as we uh, uh, wait on you to give in your commitment to God. Christians are committed in their giving. That's a part of what Christian life is all about. Uh, there's no such thing as a Christian who is non-committed to give because that's what Jesus was all about. Jesus was all about giving. He was about giving to needs. He was about giving to the kingdom. In fact, he was the first fruit. He was the first fruit. The Bible calls him the first fruit. And the first fruit has always been identified as a holy part of God. And as we give, we give uh, of our first fruits unto the Lord, which the first ten percent of all of our giving is holy unto God. So God bless you as they come this morning and receive your tithing and your offerings. Praise God. You love the Lord this morning? Great to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On last couple of weeks ago, we started a series talking about the children of Israel and their journey uh, out of the land of Goshen into the land of Canaan and the journey they were on and how they would get there. And uh, wonderful experiences that they would experience on their journey in the kingdom of God. Isn't God good this morning? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. And it's, a, it's always a pleasure to be able to serve and to worship God, to know the power of the name of Jesus. God's name is, stands out above every name. The Bible said at the name of Jesus, everything that is named comes beneath him. That means no matter what it is, no matter what the obstruction, no matter what the difficulty that you're going through today, if you focus on the problem, you're not going to get the answer. you got to focus on the answer, and the answer is Jesus. And when you focus on him, God can begin to turn things around for the benefit of the people of God that they might be able to learn and gain from the things of the kingdom of God. Two weeks ago we started, we talked about the Red Sea moment, the moment in which the children of Israel, a great tribe of them, the millions of them, arrived at the Red Sea and how that God miraculously delivered an entire nation of people out of the bondage and out of the uh, hands of the Egyptians as they were coming after them. Then last week, we talked about on the journey, once they crossed the Red Sea, how that God's provision, how that God's protection was with them and God took care of them on that journey and proved himself to be their healer, proved himself to be a giver of miracles, proved himself to be a sustainer, a provider, and a protector to the people of God. Now, God is not less the day today than he was then. He is still just as great, just as powerful, just as able to be with the people of God today as he was in that day. And so we're going to take you into the next step of this journey. And uh, before I go any further, let me announce that next week we have a special guest speaker, a young lady uh, that will be here preaching for us. She's a recent graduate from Western and, and uh, a very dynamic young lady in her life and her commitment to God. And uh, we're just looking forward to having her to come and be with us in service next week. And so everybody planned to be here. We'll have special music. We'll have people here that will help us with music and what a wonderful time we're going to have. I want to talk to you this morning about what may be the most, one of the most important lessons, if not the most important lessons, that we've covered thus far in our, in our message. Uh, do you realize this is playing back here? Okay. Uh, we've, got to, we've, got to, uh, uh, we've got to pursue God and we've got to follow God. Everybody say follow God. Now, through our ups and downs on our roller coaster journey of life, and that's what I've found life to be, 
Life is not all highs. Life is kind of a roller coaster ride. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's not. Sometimes things are good, sometimes things are not so good. And we kind of ride a roller coaster. But in a roller coaster life that we are in, there is, it is very important that we can find some things that are stable, some things that are not changing, some things that are permanent. And one of those things, and the only thing really that is totally permanent, is God. God this morning is present and he is constant. And as a present God, he is a constant God. He never leaves us, never forsakes us. He is always here. He is always working. He is always caring. And he is always calling out to us to follow him more closely than we ever have in our life. If you believe that, give God a praise in the house this morning. Amen. I'm going to take you back to the book of Exodus chapter 13. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 17 this morning. And let's notice what it said. And Pharaoh finally, uh, uh, finally let the people go, and God did not lead them along the main road. Now, I want you to notice here this morning. God did not lead them along the main road. He didn't take them on the main way that most people would have traveled. He led them on a different route. They didn't go the shortest route into the land of promise, but the Bible said there was a reason for that. God said, if these people are faced with battle, many of them will change their minds and will return back to Egypt. Now, I want you to hear this this morning. I've been preaching for a long, long time. I've seen a lot of people come to the church, and they're looking for the church as a refuge, and the church can be that. But I'm telling you that when you come to God, there's only one principal thing that you can get from God, and that's the washing of your soul and spirit to make you pure and white before God, and then everything else falls in line after that. Amen. If I come to God expecting God to show up in all these things, in this situation, in that situation, but I'm not willing to serve God, I'm a little unfair to ask God for very much in my life. Amen. I'm here to preach to you this morning. That's my job. That's what I'm called of God to do. And God said, when you're facing the battle, many of them that are facing the battle would turn their backs on God and will go back to the land of Egypt if we uh, take them on the shortest way that leads there. So God had to take them on detours to try to keep them away from confrontation. There's one thing that this is telling me is this, that God recognized that there was a pattern developing in their life, and that pattern was that they were showing a weakness of faith that they were not willing to follow God by faith. <coughs> this morning, you have a call from God. You have a commission from God. God is the leader. God is the guide. God is the director. And you've got to allow God to become the stronghold of your life, and you've got to allow God to pull you through the basic destructions, and the hard times of life, you've got to let God be willing to do that. Amen. And if you don't allow it, the things of God are not going to be able to come to you. You've got to allow the blessings of God to flow. Can you give God praise in the house this morning? Amen. All right. I want to talk to you about following the cloud, being willing to follow the cloud of God. It may not lead you the direction that you think that you need to be going. It may not lead you to where you think that everything is going to be all right. I'm sure there were those that left out of the land of Egypt to the land of Canaan that immediately said, we're going the wrong way. We're going a different direction than where we ought to be going. Canaan is that way, and we're going this way. And we need to turn and go a different direction. But God established things very early on, and that is that if you're going to ever make it to the land of Canaan, you're going to have to be willing to follow the cloud to get there. You can't get there on your own. You've got to follow the cloud of God. And the Bible said in verse 18, so God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness. God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness. They didn't go the way that they thought they should be going, but they had to follow the way that God had designed for them if they were going to get to the land of Canaan. Amen. If you're going to follow God, God knows the direction. You believe that this morning? God knows the direction. And God knows how you ought to be going. And God knows what you need in your life. 
And you've got to be willing to follow after God in order to get there. Amen. And so we've got to be willing to follow God. He may lead us in a roundabout way through the wilderness to get us to where we need to go. Then in verse 19, the Bible said that Moses took the bones. Everybody say the bones. I want you to get a hold of that. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made, he had made the people of Israel promise him and swear unto him that on the time when they left the bondage of Egypt and when they went to the land of Canaan, that they would be able, uh, by the direction of God, they would be able to take their bo his bones with them and they would be able to get to where they're going. Praise God. If you love the Lord, say amen this morning. Praise God. God is good. I, I know the blessings of God are here. And I know that God wants to do something wonderful in our lives. If we'll just let God show up and do it for us, God will meet you here this morning. There are special needs in this building. And the enemy doesn't want you to hear the word of God because God is here to bring you out. The Bible said Moses, Moses took the bones of, of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear to this, to do this, and said, "God will certainly help you come. Uh, help uh, to uh, God will come to help you, and when He does, you must take my bones with you out of this place. You're got to take my bones with you out of this place. Let me tell you something this morning. There are some people that are concerned with where their life is established." where their life is built, where the foundation of their life is, they are concerned about not losing out in their integrity with God. I want to be faithful to God. I don't, I, don't want to be, I don't want to be lost. I want to be faithful. I want to be enduring. I want to hold on. I want to hear Jesus say, well done at the end of this journey. Hallelujah. I've been through some hard times. I know what difficult times are. Joseph had died in the land of bondage, not in his own homeland, but he had died in the land of slavery. And God had come to him, and God had let him know that uh, if, if he was to be delivered, it would only be by the power of God. And so Joseph died in that strange land. But on his deathbed, he said to the people, I want you to make me a promise that when it comes a time for you to be delivered out of this bondage, that you'll take my bones and you'll bring them with you and take them back to the land of Canaan with you that I might bury, be buried in the land of my, of my fathers. I'm here this morning, and I want to be buried in the land of my fathers. Not, not uh, physically, but I want to be buried in the land of my fathers. It, Joseph said, where Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the others are buried, I want to die, and I want to be buried in the land that they are buried in. Friend, this morning, when I stand before you here, and those of you that's in this audience, if you have been born into the spirit-filled movement of God, there is something you need to lock into. You need to lock into the power of God and the truth of God, and you need to let the devil know, I'm here, I'm spirit-filled, I'm serving God, I'm going to hold on to God, I'm going to live for God, I'm not going to give up, I'm not going to turn back, I'm not going to die in Egypt, I'm headed to the land of Canaan, amen, and I'm going to get there. I don't care what comes, what goes, I'm headed to the land of promise, and I'm going home. Come on, folks, give him praise in the house this morning. You see, I was born into the kingdom of God in a spirit-filled movement. I wasn't born in something that didn't believe in the power of an almighty God. I was born believing one God, apostolic power, moving of the Holy Ghost, the leadership of the cloud of God. God, send me a cloud. Lead me to the land. Don't let me falter. Don't let me fail. Take me to where I'm going. When I die, I want to be buried in the land that I was born in. God, take me to the kingdom. God, take me to the kingdom. Don't leave me out here. I don't want to remove the ancient landmarks of my doctrine. I don't want to remove the ancient landmarks of the move of the power of God. I don't want to be removed from a spirit-filled life. I don't want to be removed from the excitement of Pentecostalism. 
I want to be born by the power of God, and I'm born here, and I want to be baptized here and spiritually birthed here, and I want to be buried in the power of the kingdom of God that I know that I was born in. I'm going to live it. I'm going to die in it. I'm going to serve God in it. I don't have time to go back. i got to move forward with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Take me back to the land of my fathers. Let me die with my apostolic fathers. Let me die with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, and Paul. Let me take me back. Take me back. Take me back to the roots. Take me back to the foundation of the church. Don't let me falter out here, but I've got to die in the land of my fathers. God, let me be buried in the land that my fathers lived in and served in. When I look into the Bible, don't let me preach something different than they preach. Let me pick up the doctrines of the New Testament, and if it said it, I'm going to believe it. If the Bible said when they were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that they spoke in tongues and magnified God. If you're in a church and don't believe that, you need to get out because that's what the Word of God said. you got to follow him, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God, let me die where I was born. Let me hold on to the truth I was saved in. Let me hold on to the life that's in my spirit today. Oh, yes, Joseph didn't want to die in a strange land, but he said, God, when the resurrection happens, I'm going to be in Canaan because I'm coming out with Abraham. I'm coming out with Isaac. I'm coming out with Jacob. I'm coming out with the patriarchs. I want to come out where they come out at. So do I this morning. I want to rise in the kingdom of my fathers. I want to rise in the kingdom of God. I want to arise with Jesus and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God, help me arise where I live because as I live, so shall I die. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said then, the Lord went ahead of them and guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and brought light into the night of a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or to travel by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of the cloud or the pillar of the fire from out uh, fr uh, from from its uh, place in front of the people. God didn't move it. God left that cloud out there to lead them and to guide them. Now listen to this. God but wherever you are this today, I don't care where your life is. I don't care how messed up it is. I don't care what's going on in your life. Hallelujah. I've got bad things happening in mine. I wish things were better in some of my situations of life than they are. But I'm here to tell you this one thing, that God is in this situation with me. For the Bible said the Lord went ahead of them. And he said when you get there, I'm going to be there. I'm already ahead of you. I'm already there. That means when I walk through the trial, God is already there. God may have sent the trial because had he not sent it, you might have gone to hell if God hadn't got your attention. I'm here to tell you, I'd rather live my life the rest of my days in a hospital ward and go to heaven than to have all the things of this world and go to hell. God, let me serve you. Let me die in the land of my fathers. Hallelujah. I want to serve God. I want to follow God. The cloud was protecting them because the desert in the daytime, the temperature would arise to near 120 or better degrees. And in the evening, it would drop down to below freezing temperatures in the night. So God said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a cloud over you, and you just follow it. And when you're there, you live in the comfort of the air-conditioned zone. And in the hot and the cold of the night, you're not going to have to carry extra blankets to bog you down. I'm going to send a pillar of fire, and I'll keep you warm in the cold of the night. You think God's not a provision, God, that he doesn't look out for the smallest, most minute areas of your life? He's watching you. He sees you when you're sick. He sees you when you don't feel well. He sees you when there's pains in your body. And God's saying, I've already been there. He's already had the same pain you're feeling, been through the same trial you're facing, been through the same temptation. And he said, I made it through it. And if I made it through it and you stay under my leadership, I'm going to bring you through it also. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. God, don't let me get away from the cloud. Oh, yes. 
Hallelujah. I need God's guidance. I need God's leadership. I need God's help. How about you this morning? Do you need God's help? Oh, yes. I need God's help more than I've ever needed before. God, before, I need him today. I need you, Lord. I need you. Now, in your pursuit of God, you're in a journey to the promised land. It is a picture of God delivering. That promised land journey is a picture of God delivering people from death unto life and leading them from a former destination to a new home. Hallelujah. Not without trials, not without tests, but you're going to get there. Now, there are the three phases of this journey that we're in, but in our pursuit of God. Number one, the first phase is, is that when you come to Jesus Christ, he will immediately, completely and permanently deliver you from the penalty of sin. Amen. God will deliver you. As long as you'll serve him, God will take care of the wrongs in your life and things that are going wrong in your life. There's a penalty to sin. There's a payday that's coming for those that don't get their sin under the blood of Jesus Christ. Here's what, here's what the Bible said. Some men's sins follow after them, and some men's sins go before them. Now, I'm going to tell you, I want my sins to go before me. I want them to be blood washed. I don't want them to be trailing along behind me like a shadow behind me that's going to come up in judgment to torment me. No, I want my sins to be taken care of under the power of the blood. I want the power of the name of Jesus to wash away the trial, to wash wash away the miserable moments, to wash away the hurts, to wash away the sadness. I want God to take care of my life. For the Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ my Lord. When I came to God and I became blood washed, God washed me from the penalty of sin. That doesn't mean that salvation gave me a license to sin. It means that I have a responsibility in my life to turn my life over to God and to be led by him. The children of Israel were delivered, but they weren't set free until they got to the land of Canaan. They were in the bondage of the journey. Amen. But when they made it there, the cloud moved no more. Let me tell you, there are people today that they're no longer following. They're no longer being led. They're no longer moving. They've just stopped and they think it's all right because I found my way out of Egypt. Everything's okay. It is. If you don't mind being buried in the wilderness called sin, but if you want to go to the land of Canaan that flows with milk and honey and benefits, you've got to follow God to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got a responsibility to God. And if I sin, amen, the Bible said, if you sin, turn your life over to God. And when you turn it over to God, the Holy Spirit will give you direct access unto God and the God of heaven will wash away all the sins that you have done. You are indwelt by the Holy Ghost today. Sin does not have the ability to control your life. Yes, you're going to have problems. You're going to have troubles. You know why? Because if you didn't, you would forget God. If you didn't go through some trials, you would forget God. You would turn your back, and the Bible said, forget him and go back to the land of Egypt. But when you face a trial, when you face a hardship, when you face an indecision, when you face a difficult moment, what it's doing, God is trying to get your sense of direction that you'll understand, I must follow Jesus. He is my answer. I've got to follow him. Give him praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. You, have to, you don't have to give in to sin anymore. Sin doesn't have power over you. If I give in to sin... The direction of God. The Bible said those whom God loves, he chastises. If God loves you, he's going to come after you. He's not going to leave you out there in that sin to go to hell. He's going to torment you and try to get your mind back in alignment with him. What degree does God have to go to to get your attention? He'll do it, friend. We're under new management. I'm not under the management of sin anymore. I'm not under management of the old way anymore. I've been equipped with everything I need to make this journey with God successfully I turned my life over to God as a young man I didn't wait till I was an old uh, 50, 60, 70 year old person to turn my life over to God I turned it over as a young man 
and I found out that there's a new position, a new status, a new identity in God that I could not find in the old way because this is a new and a living way in Jesus. And the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Not only did God deliver us from the penalty of sin, but number two, he will slowly and progressively deliver you from the power of sin as you, and, and teach you how to walk with God in the power of his presence. Oh God, I need your presence. I need your power. I need your strength. I need your help. Now, in my journey, I found many times this old man, this oedemic nature of mine, this nature I was born with, wanted to rise up and keep hanging around, and he'll do that, trying to influence you to do wrong. But if you're born again, you're a brand new person in God. And if you're born again, the Bible teaches me that I'm under new management, under new control, I have a new spirit, I have a new mind, I have a new heart, and I can walk away from sin if I want to. I have the power to do it. I can walk away from it. I'm going to trust God. Even if the situation looks bad and the situation looks like I can't get out of it, I'm still going to trust God. If I do the right thing and I follow the right way and I lead them being led by the cloud of God, God is going to take me through this journey and I'm going to succeed at the end of this journey if I'm willing to follow him. The third thing. Give him praise in the house. And then the third escape is, is that we're going to arrive in heaven and permanently and once for all be delivered from the very presence of sin. As long as you're alive in this world, the presence of sin will ever present itself to you. But when you turn your life over to God, God delivers you from the presence of that sin and you learn to live in intimacy with God. We have a new life. Follow God. You have a new way. Follow the cloud. Israel's wonder, wondered. They wondered and they wondered and they wondered. And they would not turn their life over to God. Jesus picked it up like this. And here's what he said in John 16 and verse 17. I'm going to do what is best for you. In other words, of the King James, he said, I'm going to do what's expedient for you. I'm going to do what's best for you. That is why I'm going to go away. The apostles didn't want him to leave. They didn't want him to go away. But Jesus said, it's best for you that if I go, for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, cannot come to help you until I leave. But after I'm gone, I will send my Spirit unto you. Let me tell you this morning that if you're looking for salvation, don't read the book of Genesis. It's not there. If you're looking for salvation, don't read the book of Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the Kings or the Samuels or the Psalmist or any of the others. You'll find types and you'll find shadows. But the salvation, it is not there. I don't want the, uh, the shadow of the salvation. I want salvation. I want the power of God. You can find examples of the Spirit outpouring or the Spirit falling, but you cannot find the real manifestation of God in the pages of the Old Testament. Jesus' death brought salvation to the world and the world knows the salvation of God because of the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary and we have the most marvelous, powerful, dynamic, holy God and experience that any individual can have and we ought to be thankful and giving God ultimate praise for what he has done for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost came to us because of Calvary. You couldn't get it before then. In fact, all of those, when Paul wrote about that great lineup of heroes of faith throughout the pages of the Old Testament, he went from the beginning to the end all through that chapter. And one verse after another for 38 verses, he called name after name of people that we would identify as great heroes of the faith. But here's what he said about them in verse 39. And these all, talking about the Old Testament heroes of faith, he said, all the, uh, uh, these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. 
Adam didn't have the promise. Moses didn't have the Holy Ghost. Elijah, Elisha, they lived in faith, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost. They did not receive the promise. The promise in Acts 2, 38, 39 is the Holy Ghost. They had not received that. But here's what he said in verse 40, talking to you, talking to me. He said, God, having provided some better things for us, Oh, yes, sir, some better things for us. We don't have to have the shadow. We've got the real born-again, power-filled, Holy Ghost excitement and experience in our soul. We don't have to read about something somebody else had. We've got it. We've got it. We've got it. And I'm going to live in it until I die in the land of my fathers. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, I'm going to hold on. Now, notice what he said. Some better things for us that they without us could not be made perfect. See, they died without the washing of the blood. They died in faith. Now, here's what they're waiting for. They are waiting for the church to come to maturity, men and women to come to the place that God is going to catch out the body of believers. And when he does that, they will be perfected through us because you can't be perfected except through the church. You can't come by the law. You can't come by the shadows. you got to come by the real, born, again, experience, and they are dependent upon you to see them through. Give him praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. As Jeremy comes to the music, through Jesus' death, the Holy Ghost came to live within us. He came to guide us. He came to give us hope. He came to give us salvation. He came to deliver us. He came to be our healer. Now, sometimes people will come into the church and because their children become aware of their need of God, that gets them all upset because they don't want their children upset. You know something? Nothing could be more wonderful to me than to see my children crying and begging for the presence of Jesus Christ to become alive in them. I'm never going to tell them they don't need the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm never going to tell them they don't need Jesus. I'm going to tell them you better get all you can get because you're going to need it in this world that you're in today. You're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And there are people that are, that are dying without God. And the Holy Ghost, when it comes, it takes a permanent residency within our spirit. When God calls you into his journey, he calls you to walk side by side with him. Keep on following the cloud, friend, because God has proven himself to be faithful. When you face obstacles and they're going to come, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And when you face obstacles in your life, keep on following the cloud because God has promised himself that he is faithful. When you face setbacks, there are times that I go three steps forward and two steps back. Amen. But when I face a step back, I've got to say, I'm going to keep on following the cloud because God is faithful. When I'm facing detours in life, I'm going to keep on following the cloud because God is faithful. When I mess up and I fall flat on my face and I don't know where to turn, I'm going to keep on following the cloud because God is faithful. When everything around me seems to be going wrong and everybody seems to be against me, I'm going to keep on following the cloud because God is faithful. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are a faithful God. Give him praise in the house this morning. See, I want to blame God for things that God didn't put me where I'm at. God didn't put me in the situation that I'm in. No, God didn't do that at all. When I'm down to nothing, I'm going to follow the cloud because God is faithful. When I run out of resources and I've got nothing to turn to, and I'm like the little widow that says, I've got enough meal for one more little cornbread flitter. I can make one more little cornbread patty. And it's all over for my son and me. When you're down to your resources that ran out, just keep following the cloud. Because God's got somebody he's going to send your way. Keep on following the cloud and see what God has in store for you. 
When you're down and you're in a desperate position, keep following God. Keep following God. When you've lost people out of your life, people that you love, people that you didn't want to move out, people that you didn't want to die, people that you didn't want things to happen to, you got to keep on following the cloud because God can be trusted. As we stand together in this building this morning, I'm here to tell you there are people in this building. There are some that are addicted. There are some that are going through major problems. There are some that have faced some major setbacks. There are some that don't know where to turn, and they're battling and struggling against the perils of life. And I'm telling you, if I was that person this morning, I'd run to this altar with my hands lifted up, and I'd say, God, you have delivered my brethren in the past. You have taken away drugs. You've taken away addictions. You've brought them out of the shadows of death. And the same God can do the same for you here today. But you've got to be willing to follow the cloud. You've got to be willing to turn your life over to Jesus. And if you'll do that, then everything is going to be all right. God can do that. I mean, you've got to really turn it over to God. You've got to say, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to put things out of my life that don't belong here. Yes, I'm going to turn it over to Jesus. I'm going to believe God to come up and show up in the middle of my most difficult moments. Right now, I'm going to ask every person in this building, I don't know what your need is, but I know there's needs all over this building. So I'm going to ask you all real hurriedly to come around this front. Come on, right now, right now. And I'm going to ask you either to kneel or stand, but to lift your hands and begin to pour your heart out to God. God, I want deliverance. Come on, I'm, I'm asking you to come. Come on right now. And let's begin to pour our hearts out to Jesus. God, we got to have an answer. we got to have an answer. we got to have an answer. Oh, yes. I need thee. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray.
us. Give him praise in the house, will you? Hallelujah. Now, as we dismiss, we're going next door. It is Potluck Sunday, wonderful time for fellowship. I just had a book to come off the press about two weeks ago, and this is a study guide book. If you're not interested in studying the Bible, you're not interested in this book. This is a study guide book, and it will take you into identifying who God is, and it will, take, it will give you a lot of resources. And that's what it, the whole thing is built around is resources. And we want you to, if you're interested, this book costs $20. I wish we could sell it cheaper than that, but we can't. And, uh, but it will cost you $20. There's some in the entry. But long after I'm gone, I hope this will be in print. This is coming, will be um, in, at Amazon in the next few weeks and will be uh, at Amazon to be sold there. And um, this book is full of deep scriptural resources. Every page, 171 pages filled with deep scriptural research. And this book, I, I took about 10 months to write this book, probably close to 10 months. But I'm telling you, it took me over 50 years to get it here because over 50 years of study has gone into this book. I've been blessed to be able to travel across the United States and to debate preachers against false doctrine and against the identity of Jesus and taking away from the identity of Jesus. And this is resources that I've been able to build in over 50 years of studying the Word of God. And so if you would like to have one of these, we want you to have one, but I want you to read it and to study it and to learn from the content of this book because that's the most important thing. I was edified this week by some pastors that contacted me and said, we have already started our Wednesday night study out of the book. And that's our study for the next year is out of this book. And I feel very fascinated by that. You know, that's in different states, coming from different states. And um, God bless you this morning if you're interested in having one. I think that it will add knowledge. I know it will add knowledge to you if your noggin is willing to receive it. You've got to be willing to get it in here. God bless you. Let's go next door and have some fellowship together at the table of Church of Joy. This is the table of God. That's the table of the Church of Joy. God bless you. So great to see you here this morning, you and your son. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Amen.